Well, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to uh, the home of vintage uh, off-road uh, dirt bikes right here at Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV. Now, again, thanks to everybody out there for your continuing support of my channel with regards uh, subscribing uh, to CDB TV because we're now uh, on our way to that uh, 20,000 uh, subscribers total. So thanks again to everybody out there for your support. Right now we're going to take a look at a bike that's, uh, well, not so much uh, of a classic, but uh, certainly a bike uh, from the 1980s. And uh, this particular machine is yet another uh, one of those hybrid bikes that have been converted uh, for use uh, as a twin shock racer. So let's get straight into it and take a look at Jim Parker's uh, lovely CR480 Honda twin shock hybrid. Okay, so this uh, rather tasty looking CR480 Honda Twin Shocker is uh, yet another bike that I came across uh, during my ventures around the paddock at the recent Kendall Classic uh, Revival uh, Scramble. Now this featured bike is uh, another beauty from the Jem Parker uh, Classic Bike Building Workshop. And you may remember uh, some of the other examples that we've already featured here on my channel uh, built by Jem because I think it was only just about a year ago that we posted his lovely uh, classic uh, CCM from this very uh, same event here at Kendall. But Jem's always uh, coming up with interesting and uh, quite rare machines and this Honda here is his latest uh, creation. So let's uh, just have a quick uh, look around uh, some of its parts. Now, almost uh, straight away, you've probably already twigged that this is uh, not your uh, run-of-the-mill CR480 Honda that you're used to seeing with that uh, monster uh, 480 engine and the usual single uh, monoshock suspension at the rear, which of course would make this uh, bike an evolution example uh, from the 1980s era. But once again, and uh, as in the Ken Muir YZ490 Yamaha that we featured a while back. Uh, this is uh, yet another single shock evolution bike that's had its back end uh, doctored so that it can be used as an older uh, twin shock uh, racer. And this one here's uh, just like the YZ and it's been expertly done and well engineered by uh, Jem Parker at his uh, JR uh, racing workshop. Now, the entire process of turning these Evolution racers into the old uh, twin shock bikes uh, usually involves uh, a bit of surgery uh, to the back end of the Evolution bike's frame and then uh, welding on uh, mounting points uh, both uh, onto the frame and then uh, onto the swing arm to enable it to take a pair of old school uh, twin shocks uh, as opposed uh, to the conventional single shock that's used on uh, the evil bikes. But uh, other uh, modifications are also carried out uh, here on the bike's uh, swing arm where uh, basically a normal straight uh, evil swing arm would then be cut in half and then modified uh, to put uh, an angle or dog leg uh, on it and then welding it all uh, back uh, together. And almost everybody who carries out these kind of uh, modifications still use uh, measurements and design parameters taken uh, from the 1981 490 Micro Mega 2, which they are all, of course, considering the best twin shock bike that was ever made. So I suppose if you're uh, going to build or re-engineer an old twin shocker, then uh, you'll want to start uh, with the best of templates. And uh, you can see here on James' bike that he's had that uh, very uh, modification done on this uh, alloy swing arm. But generally speaking, it's uh, much the same procedure for uh, whatever make and model uh, you want to convert, as it's usually uh, the bike's rear subframe that gets the chop and uh, the swing arm is copied uh, with regards its length, angle uh, and the twin shock's uh, final positions, uh, of course, all taken uh, from uh, the Michael 490. And uh, basically what racers uh, are looking for is to have the power 
and reliability of a modern uh, two-stroke uh, power plant with the superb handling uh, of the big Maiko and uh, these awesome CR480 Honda uh, rockets are certainly uh, a popular engine for use in these uh, kind of conversions. Which uh, brings us on quite nicely to our uh, twin shock Honda power plant, which, uh, as I understand, is a 1983 engine, as was, of course, uh, the bike's chassis uh, before its upgrade, uh, or even downgrade, if you'd like to call it that. But uh, make no mistake, these CR480s are pretty good engines, and in 1983 there was probably uh, no better suited motor uh, as a motocross uh, power plant and some of the biggest names in off-road racing uh, did have some great successes riding these 480s with uh, the likes of the late uh, great Danny Magoo Chandler to name uh, just one such celebrity who could certainly do uh, some wonderful things while he was riding these big 480 strokers. But in their uh, stock standard trim, uh, these uh, 480s, I think, had a bore of about uh, 89 millimetres and a stroke of around 76 uh, millimetres, which, which I think roughly gave them uh, a displacement of around 472 uh, cc's. Now, fuel uh, was supplied uh, to that motor through a reed valve uh, block and a 38 uh, millimeter key in uh, carburetor although I think this carb here on uh, James Honda is a much more uh, modern flat slide uh, key in unit which of course drags its air supply through uh, a washable foam type filter that sits inside that uh, plastic air box and uh, as you're aware these big bore two-stroke Hondas uh, aren't exactly the easiest bikes uh, to start uh, with that left-sided uh, kicker, but uh, a small decompressor button's been added uh, to the engine cylinder head here just to uh, lower that compression slightly and make it a bit easier uh, to kick the engine over. And uh, here on the motor's transmission side, it was uh, a five-speed gearbox with the usual uh, wet oil-cooled uh, multi-plate clutch. But uh, as I said, the kickstart is on the left-hand side and uh, with this being quite a tall bike, it uh, wasn't uh, that easy to start if you were a bit short in the leg department. So maybe a box uh, for your standing leg was probably uh, quite a good idea. But uh, remember uh, to angle your kicking foot uh, to uh, the side just to stop it fouling uh, on that uh, foot peg. And uh, to make uh, the sparks fly on our 480 engine, it was uh, a modern style uh, CDI electronic ignition system, which, uh, as I remember, I think uh, was quite robust and generally uh, reliable. And if uh, you did eventually manage to get a good kick at the engine, then it usually uh, fired up uh, relatively quickly. But uh, in the power stakes for 1983, these uh, 480 two-strokers were certainly pumping out. I think it was around the 50 horsepower mark, which was uh, quite good considering that uh, most of the big bore 500s at that time were pumping out about the same uh, 50 horsepower bracket. So uh, these 480s uh, were still a match for any of the open class bikes uh, of its day, but uh, they say that most of this engine's uh, good work was all done in the low to mid rev range and uh, there wasn't an awful lot of puff left uh, when you got uh, to the top end. So uh, short shifting and keeping that motor in the mid range was exactly how to ride uh, these ballistic missiles. And uh, you can go straight to the top of the class if you've uh, already recognised that this exhaust expansion chamber as uh, not uh, the original part that was fitted onto the 1983 480 because uh, this uh, particular pipe here is actually a slightly uh, modified Michael uh, 490 exhaust that James altered uh, to fit uh, onto this Honda. But uh, I'm still sure that uh, the front header part of the exhaust system is the proper Honda 
for 80 fitment from 1983, but uh, most of the modification work has all gone into altering uh, that expansion chamber part uh, of the pipe so that it fits uh, neatly around the Honda chassis and, of course, uh, the 480 two-stroke engine. And you can see that it's all been very well engineered and a neat fit on this Gem Parker uh, built uh, machine. And uh, as you can see, that uh, modified uh, Michael pipe eventually then uh, leads onto this alloy uh, tailpipe, which is a DEP uh, part uh, manufactured, of course, by DEP Pipes in Buckland Hill in Maidstone in uh, Kent in the UK, who make all manner of exhaust systems for two and four stroke uh, motocross race bikes. And this light alloy rear tailpipe is yet uh, another quality part on this 480 uh, twin shock racer. Although uh, overall these uh, CR480 engines, uh, they weren't perfect uh, by any means, but uh, they were still uh, an absolute belter uh, of a motor. And with the right rider in the pilot seat uh, giving it the welly, and these uh, 480s could quite easily hang uh, with the bigger 500s. And uh, with top riders like the great uh, Danny Magoo Chandler, he was uh, one of the very few riders that knew how to work these uh, 480s. And when this engine was kept in its sweet spot of the mid-range, then there wasn't really much uh, that would pass you uh, on the racetrack. So as we move on to the front end of our Jim Parker bike, which uh, back in 1983 would have been a pair of 43 millimeter uh, Showa forks, and it looks like uh, Jim's decided to stay uh, with those uh, stock units. But I expect that uh, he'll also have maybe beefed them up internally because, uh, as I remember, the standard forks on the 480s were uh, a bit uh, on the soft side. And uh, up here at the front, I'm pretty sure that these are still the original uh, and proper triple clamps or uh, yokes uh, for our Honda uh, Showa forks, which uh, look like they've had some kind of uh, Cerakote uh, coating applied to them to uh, change uh, their colour. Now, these plastic fork leg guards here on the bottom of the forks look like they've come uh, straight from the Honda factory, but uh, in actual fact, uh, Jem made these parts himself just out of a piece of simple uh, plastic piping. And uh, again here on the front, it's still the stock standard uh, old school uh, drum brake here on our Honda, which in fact uh, was uh, actually quite a good stopper, even uh, for that early 1980s period. But it must be uh, quite tempting uh, for the guys who build these hybrid twin chokers to maybe fit uh, more modern hydraulic brakes onto the front of these bikes. But uh, then again, if they did that, of course, they wouldn't qualify uh, to race the bike in the twin chok class because they have to have uh, drum brakes uh, both at the front and uh, at the rear. And again, I'm sure you've already guessed that both this front and the rear wheel uh, are brand new replacements. Uh, and these gold anodized alloy SM Pro Platinum wheels have all been relaced onto the original Honda hubs with new uh, heavy uh, duty spokes. So we've already discussed uh, what happens uh, to the swing arm to convert it uh, for twin shock racing, but uh, back in 1983, this alloy box section swing arm would have uh, just been a simple uh, straight uh, forward unit with a, a single Showa monoshock suspension uh, shock that was bolted into the middle in the usual uh, evolution bike uh, kind of fashion. And uh, naturally, during uh, the bike's conversion, that single Showa monoshock was then replaced uh, by these high-quality uh, pair of YSS uh, piggyback suspension units, which uh, I know are very popular uh, with the guys who race these uh, twin shock race bikes because these uh, shocks do have quite a huge scope of uh, means of adjustment 
uh, to the rebound and uh, damping settings and they're uh, also made of quite good quality uh, materials. And uh, what's more, uh, they're all made uh, right here in the UK at their premises in Southwick, uh, West uh, Sussex. So uh, YSS are certainly another uh, very good contact to keep in mind if you're uh, maybe in the market for uh, new shocks for your old dirt bike or uh, even road bike uh, for that matter. But once more, it's uh, a quite substantial uh, rear drive sprocket that's uh, got the job of uh, putting that 50 or so horsepower uh, onto this uh, back wheel. And our 480 it still has its uh, original magnesium uh, brake uh, backplate as well, as you can see. And uh, just to keep that rear chain from rubbing up against those precious uh, rear shocks, this alloy chain guard's also been bolted onto the right-hand side of the bike swing arm. And again, uh, GEM's Honda doesn't uh, have its uh, 1983 factory-fitted plastic fuel tank that uh, these bikes had in that year. And uh, although I was never actually told on the day, it's probably uh, quite fair to say that this fuel cell here has been uh, taken from a late 1970s Honda Red Rocket or uh, something uh, similar. But uh, anyway, this alloy tank uh, looks much better than the uh, not so nice looking uh, plastic item that was fitted onto the 83 uh, original and uh, this will this tank will uh, maybe not hold the same amount of fuel as uh, the original but it will certainly be uh, more than enough for the length of races that this bike will be doing in twin shock uh, classic racing but with regards uh, seat comfort on the 480 you'll probably uh, never come across a more plush and safe place to rest your precious crown jewels upon than uh, the luxurious amounts of padding that was offered uh, on these 83 uh, Honda seats. And uh, once more, uh, more quality parts as we move on to the bike's uh, controls department with uh, a pair of Rikon levers and their associated uh, alloy red uh, anodized adjusters there uh, as well. But this is the gasser throttle that will be responsible for controlling uh, those 50 or so horses that will soon be let loose from that 480 Honda two-stroke engine. So uh, without doubt a steady right hand is required here uh, to tame uh, this beast. And uh, also here on the clutch side, it's uh, again uh, a Rikon lever and adjuster with a pair of uh, pro grip rubber handlebar grips uh, as well. All uh, wired, of course, uh, onto the bars to stop them uh, slipping around uh, their mounts. And you can uh, just see that rubber engine kill switch there as well so uh, that the rider can uh, kill the motor if he fills his underwear uh, when this big Honda uh, takes off into the stratosphere. But without doubt, the original uh, Evolution Monoshock CR480 uh, of 1983 was still uh, a fantastic uh, bike, and it was certainly the lightest, uh, the best handling, and probably uh, the best looking uh, of the big bore open class racers of that year and uh, in its way it was a bit like the big twin shock 490 Maiko that came uh, two years before which uh, was yet another uh, awesome bike with arm stretching uh, power that only the very brave or uh, superhero types uh, could tame and it was much the same with these 480 Hondas because a lot of people uh, could ride them but usually uh, not uh, to their full potential and it was uh, only a very rare and special breed of person who could uh, take these ballistic missiles uh, to the very maximum of their race uh, ability. Although whether you actually agree with these kind of hybrid uh, transformations or not, there's uh, no mistaking the fact that Jim has built himself uh, another cracker uh, of a twin shocker and this uh, featured bike here already has its pilot uh, already briefed 
and ready uh, to go. And it will be uh, debuted uh, at a race event uh, near you quite soon where you'll be able to see her uh, kick ass against uh, many of the other uh, big bore race bikes that it's going to do uh, battle with. And hopefully we here at uh, CDB uh, TV will be there to witness its first ever race victory. Okay, so there you have it, a nice uh, 480 Honda from uh, Gem Parker. Now, coming up next here on CDB TV, we'll be uh, taking a look at this uh, absolutely stonking uh, JBR uh, 500 uh, Honda Twin Shocker. Now, this is a bike that was built uh, some years ago by uh, the classic bike building guru, uh, Rod Spry. So we'll be taking a look at this bike in my next video here on CDB uh, TV. But for the time being, it's uh, goodbye for now. <laughs> <laughs>